I'm David Hoffman, filmmaker, and you're about to see a bit of home movie of something that happened in the late 1950s and early 1960. Shot as a home movie, a little piece of film. It shows a sit-in and the results of the sit-ins. You know what a sit-in is? If you don't, a sit-in was done by black college students and by some white students in the South to change segregation and force integration. I was a kid in the North and I was taught in school, as all of us were taught in the 1950s, that America is the land of the free. And we also identified with our generation, as every generation does, and we were the baby boomer generation, so big generation. And in high school, late high school and early college, I'm seeing black college students in the South do something amazing and something amazing happened to them, the sit-in. So I want to share with you a little background before I show you the clip. So picture February 1st, 1960, these black college students sit down in Greensboro, North Carolina at, I think it's a Woolworth, and they just sit down to have a cup of coffee. Now, they had been trained by the local churches who were very supportive and by people who taught nonviolence, the Martin Luther King view, the Gandhi view. You have to learn how to do this because we are going to get stuff dumped on our heads. And so they sit down the first day and they're not served. They chose Woolworths for a specific reason. Woolworths was a place a lot of black people purchased things, but you couldn't get hired. There were no black people managers. There were no black people salespeople. There were no way to eat there. There was a special bathroom, which was nowhere near as good outside in the street. And you couldn't get a cup of coffee and a piece of coffee cake uh, in this place. There was no place for black people to sit. It was segregated. It was the days of Jim Crow. So they sit down, nothing happens, they're not served. They sit for about three hours. They come back the next day and the local press is there and they sit again and they're not served. By the way, as I'm watching this in the North and tens of millions of my fellows are, these students are very well dressed, hair perfectly caught, very clearly decent people. This was wrong. This wasn't America, the land of the free. They come back the third day and the Ku Klux Klan is there. Now the press is there, so we're seeing this stuff, and the Ku Klux Klan is there, and they start harassing these people and pouring stuff on them and being really nasty and saying racial slurs, and they're really disgusting young people. My generation also, some of them, but ugly. And this thing, this sit-in, explodes all over the South. In other cities, in Woolworths, in Kresge, in Walgreens, all these lunch counters where you couldn't eat if you were black, where you couldn't have a cup of coffee, where you couldn't sit, and all these places wouldn't hire you anyway, students began coming in, more college students, trained again, some of them, and connected to the churches, and now some white students. Boy, courageous. The rest of us looked at these students. They were now being hit on occasion, cold and hot water poured on them, really harassed for sitting at this lunch counter. They were trained to stay calm and stay cool. And we were looking at this saying, who are these students? The white ones are courageous beyond belief and so are the black ones. And they're just decent people. Something's wrong here. By the end of one month, by the end of February, there are all over the South, 70,000 students involved. This grew from nothing to like this hugely rapidly. But unfortunately, some of the students who began to do this were not trained. They didn't know how to deal with aggressive, violent, disgusting behavior, and they reacted. And when they reacted, the police were there, boom, arrest them right away, long sentences, huge fines, never arresting the guys who provoked them, the guys who hit them and said things and spat on them and poured coffee, never arresting them. Is this fair? Is this America? Not right, say a lot of us Northern students from the same generation. This is wrong. This behavior is wrong. Something's very wrong. And these students are brave. They're kind of like heroes. I'd like to look at Nashville, Tennessee, because it's a southern city, and I'd like to show you what happened there. That was part of the story we were all watching. So there, there were sit-ins across the city and many violent reactions. Many, many students arrested. They filled the jails. And many acts of violence, they were never arrested. They just, the cops ignored them, and the long fines given, huge sentences given. In some cases, it took years for the Supreme Court to say, no, 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 
This is not fair. These people cannot be kept in jail and then cannot be given these exorbitant fines. And the, the sit-in concept was spreading, particularly like to movie theaters. There were a lot of movie theaters where blacks couldn't go. They could only go to black movie theaters. They were spreading this whole idea of just being there, some of the students being trained, some of the students not, the ones that not, sometimes reacted to violence against them or tried to protect the women, and worse things happened to them. So Nashville became the first city to desegregate. They couldn't stand what was happening and they desegregated their lunch counters and movie theaters and other places like that. Look at Savannah, Georgia, another city that confronted sit-ins. There was a street downtown where all the stores sold to black people and none of those stores were either owned by blacks or even had blacks working there. So there the local students said, don't shop in these stores. Whatever you do, boycott the stores. This protest went on for 19 months, as I recall, maybe 20 months, and in the end, everything became desegregated in Savannah, including the buses, which were also boycotted. People walked huge distances to avoid the buses because the buses were segregated. It was working, and for a Northern student like myself, these people were really impressive. They really touched me. They were succeeding without violence in changing America so America became free. In New Orleans, which at that time I think was about 40% black people, again, there was a whole section of the city where blacks shopped and totally white and unwilling to hire blacks. So when they approached and said, look, shouldn't we be able to get a job here also? No. And the stores basically went bankrupt. Much of the stores in that section of town went bankrupt because of the boycott. People really suffered in order to carry out this boycott with the adult and older populations and many whites too, supporting this movement, crowds of angry white people attacked black people, kicking people, knocking them to the ground, hitting them, never arrested from what I could tell. The black people were still being arrested, but eventually after these 19 months, um, New Orleans desegregated. So I have this piece of film in my collection because when I was making my television series, I collected little things that I thought were emotional. And if you look at this, where I've placed a piece of music next to it by a friend of mine, because it's silent footage, I hope that my background would give you a sense of what it is that's going on and why so many Northerners said, this is wrong, they're being treated wrong, things have to change.